uh, from last week. Is it John? Uh, yes, it is, Matt. Well, actually, it's I, uh, John. It, sorry? It's, yes, it's, it's, it's Johnny, Johnny Pew. So the, the, he hung up on me. <laughs> the second Johnny, the one at the very end of the show. Oh, okay. No, 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 the first one. Okay. Where, yeah, yeah, you asked the other one. Uh, is this the same guy that just called in? So, I'm the guy from Orlando. Uh, I know Tracy's from Orlando. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, you can you can sock him in the arm for being rude to me and hanging up on me. Well, it depends that, on what you not, said. That's not fair. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I just I just wanted to say real quick. Um, I, I found the verse because, I, you know, I was talking to the guy on, on the phone. I, I guess he's a producer or something. Mm -hmm. And he came, I, it was probably some miscommunication. You were asking me last week where, where do you think that I think that Jesus would send you to hell if, hypothetically, I was right and you were wrong? Yes. Kind Is that of. correct? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Okay. Um, so the, the verse, if you have your Bible, I noticed last week you had a Bible with you. It, it's 1 Corinthians 3, uh, I'm sorry, 4, 1 5. Corinthians. Yes, yes. And um, where, where you, know, you can read the verse or, or what have you. It's, it's, yeah, it's not the only one. It's, it's instructing you not to judge. Right. That and, God and that, is going to be the ultimate judge. Correct. And, 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 that, and, that's, and, and I don't see how that's relevant, honestly. And, okay. and, and, I'll, and I'll explain why. Um, uh, my question is not about what you think so much is going to happen as what you think should happen. Okay. If, so, if for example, I, I am a non-believer, non-acceptor, heretic, apostate, who God is then going to send to hell, are you fine with that? Do you think well, that, do you think that God would be doing correct, morally correct, to send me to hell? Um, well, if you if you give me a, a minute to uh, explain it, uh, uh, my view on it, yes, I, I I will I will have to. Okay, God is the hypothetically of God God exists in in your case. Uh, if 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 he does, he's the ultimate judge. If if he condemns you to hell, then yes, I would have to be all right with it because one, he's the ultimate judge, and and, and let me let me let me just uh, put it in this light. Okay, okay m most people view God as total love, and God is love, and human beings were never meant to stand in front fr in front of the Lord Jesus and be judged. There, there, there was a, a hell created only for Satan and the falling angels, the one quarter or one third that got casted out. That is reserved for Satan and his falling angels. That, that's why we have a hell. Human beings were never created to go to hell, but because, you know, God is love, but there's one thing that overrules God's love, and that's his righteousness and his justice for um, um, uh, holiness. So, and, and sin cannot be in God's presence. Therefore, he had to kick out the angels. Therefore, we in the Garden of Eden got casted out, and we can only come back into his presence through Jesus Christ covering of, of, of you know, because he gave his life on the cross for us. He was a and, sacrificial lamb. And did you think that I hadn't heard this particular story before? Oh no no no! I, I okay. know you heard it. I know I know you went to seminary. And you know no, I more didn't, about I the didn't, Bible than me. I didn't go to seminary. I didn't go yeah. to seminary. I was studying in preparation to. But it, that, none of that matters. Uh, I just have to keep clarifying that because people keep get there. Here's well, my, I, I would here, like to hear your. Uh, here's my question that I don't think you really answered. Okay, well, you, you did, kind of. You did. To be fair, you answered it. You said that if God did that, you'd have to be okay with it because He's the ultimate moral judge. Correct. That, that is correct. And not only do I think that, not only do I disagree in the sense that I think that you're wrong, I yeah. think that by saying that, um, you have lost um, any position you might have had. Because what you've done is said that if God tells you, for example, to cut off the arms, uh, let's say God tells you 
uh, there's a there's a 12 year old girl over there, and he wants you to go over and rape her. I don't 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 say God would never do that. It it doesn't matter. I, I realize you don't think this is in God's character, um, although there are plenty of things in the Bible uh, that would seem to well, go. Well, he would torture you for eternity him. for not believing in him. So I don't. Think Maybe I'm not sure that John John's <laughs> view of hell may be along the lines of Billy Graham's, where there, there's no hell. You're just you don't get to go yeah, see God. He would separated. annihilate you. I, I I can explain hell to you if you'd like. <laughs> Okay, but hang on. I'll, I'll let you do it. Um, so let's say let's say that God tells you He wants you to go rape this twelve-year-old girl. Um, y you would then have to be okay with it and think that it was morally correct because God is ordering you to do it, right? Well, that would that would be uh, along the so lines of the story of Abraham uh, killing his own son. God, God, what God did was He tested Abraham, and, and at the last minute he gave a, a sacrificial uh, lamb or ram okay, up on okay. the side of the mountain. Okay, okay, Scott, John, you're, you're missing it. What you've said, though, okay, okay, Scott, John, you're missing it. Okay, okay, John, you're missing it. What you've said, though, is that if he hadn't stopped him, that it would be right because God instructed it. You, you've just finished saying that if God instructs something, yes. it's right. And so, yes. and so if God, if you were convinced that God told you to go rape this 12-year-old girl, you would consider it morally correct, right? Well, First of all, God would never instruct I, that. I, I squashed that at the beginning. Okay. Hypothetically, you would say that that's morally correct. Well, no, I wouldn't because I, I, I don't think God... So you think God's correct. wrong? No, I don't think God is wrong. I think God, God, I think God provides provisions, okay? And, and that's exactly what, what he does with Jesus, with Abraham, with Isaac. He provided provision for his people. What does okay. any of this have to do with what we're talking about? It, it has everything to you, do with it. You said a minute ago that God is the ultimate moral authority and that whether or not you personally agree with him or not, if he says it, it's therefore just, correct? Okay. Correct. You, say, you did say that, correct? No. Is what? what are, yes, I did. I did okay, say, you did, I say, did that. say that. So, but in that case, using, in, in that know, case, using a criminal act. Okay. Um, you don't think that you don't think that it. ordering uh, Abraham to kill Isaac was a criminal act? But but God knew beforehand. It doesn't okay, matter. He was going. It to doesn't matter, John. It doesn't thing. matter. Matt, what Matt is asking you is where do you where is your moral authority? Do you have my, your own personal sense of morality, or do you just simply cave to whatever you believe God says is my moral? my moral my moral authority is, is through Jesus Christ who came and preached peace. Sure. And and and, and sure he Jesus preached Christ, peace. Sure, he preached Jesus, peace because Jesus Christ is more moral than than all just all human beings on the on the on human beings. He's not more moral than I am. He's not yes, more moral than Tracy. I don't think he's more moral than you. But let me go back to Abraham real quick because you missed the point. You no, know, I got I got your point, but I'm, no, I'm you not, didn't. I'm, no, you didn't, John. I swear to your God, you did not get my point. Okay, go ahead. It doesn't matter what God knew. Abraham believed that God would do this, that God, this was something God would and did ask of him. He was willing to obey this and felt that it was his moral obligation. In Abraham's mind, it was within the character of his God, within the moral character of his God, to yes. demand this human sacrifice. Yes. That is the key to this entire story. Yes. What, and I, be, I believe it to be true. Then you are because, immoral. Because, listen. Then you are immoral. You have put yourself in a position where no, whatever, because, be, whatever this God says is therefore moral, and that's not the case. But who makes it moral or immoral? You do, and I do, and she does, and she does. God does. How do you know that God is the good one and the devil's the bad one? <laughs> Because because God is more powerful and He was cast. Oh, might makes I, right. I, I so might be, makes right. What's that? So might, might makes, makes right. right. I, I still didn't. In other it. words, th that, that it's called might makes right, and what it means is because I I have the brute force to be able to achieve something that it therefore is correct. 
That's what you're no, just I, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think God does it by brute, brute force. You just said that more you powerful. That you said he was the good one because he was more powerful. No, he, he's the good one because he's the holy one. How do you know? How do you know that he's not the evil one and the devil is well, the good I one? I guess my and that Yahweh has because, just because I, I, I go by the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, so, the, so the, you believe an ancient text that tells you which one's good and which one's bad. So your real, eight. so your real. Oh gosh, please. So your real ultimate moral authority is not Jesus Christ or, or any personal revelation or anything else. It's an old set of books. No, it's, it's, it's the real one. The real what? Well, the, it, the, it's, it's, you have to no, use... My, my, I, it's the combination because it's a historical document, and that's how modern man knows about Jesus Christ. Okay, first of all, the modern man knows nothing about Jesus Christ from the Dead Sea frickin' scrolls because they were written before he was born. The Dead that, Sea scrolls are Old Testament documents. It's the Torah. Yes, which says and nothing at all about Jesus. And the prophecies leading up to Jesus Christ. The Jews oh, would disagree with loud. you. The Jews disagree with you. Yeah. Um, and by the way, the people who uh, wrote it don't agree. The the, the, okay. the the Dead Sea Scrolls with regard to morality are some of the most immoral things you're going to find in the Bible. It tells it endorses yeah, slavery. I, well, tells you who you can enslave, how long you can enslave them, how much you pay for them, and how to mark them as your slaves. This is this is the the ultimate authority of morality for you. You yeah. are not bigger than yeah. this. You are not able to exercise some compassion and humanity and say, yes, as a matter of fact, slavery is wrong. And you know what? It was wrong back then, but those people just didn't quite get it. And if God has sanctioned slavery, Matt, it was what, still what, wrong. What is, what's the, alter, ultimate, the, the ultimate sacrifice for, human, for mankind that mankind knows? It's God giving his own son. That's and not a sacrifice, John. That, was that in that is, of stop. God to kill his own son? Okay, first of all, um, this idea that it was his own son is absurd. It was, it was supposedly, according to Christian doctrine, himself. He was sacrificing himself in human form to himself. Oh, no, no, you, you got to hold. I'll let you talk again. How dare you say that this was a sacrifice? At least when Elvis died for my sins, he stayed dead. If you came to me tomorrow and said, hey, if you, if we, if you let us beat you and whip you and torture you and hang you up and kill you, I guarantee you we will end poverty in the world tomorrow. I'll do it. I will. If, if there's an absolute guarantee that that would be the outcome, I'll do it. You know, I'll go down to forever. I'll be famous forever for it. I mean, if, that, if, you, get, if you can come up with no better justification um, than empathy and compassion, um, fame, living forever as the guy who ended poverty. However, if you came to me and said, um, uh, by the way, not only will we beat you and torture you and hang you up and kill you, but we'll raise you from the dead in three days and you get to be God? That's not a sacrifice? What, what exactly did God sacrifice? He, he sacrificed his physical body as he came down. If he is the creator of everything, what is a physical body? What, what possible sacrifice could that be for him? Couldn't he just make another one? He how, could have picked. He could have picked anything. How could oh. that? How can that be a I sacrifice? Guess, You're giving something up. To me, though, that whole thing is just a, another testament to the immorality of this character Yahweh. Yeah, I mean, he's a blood because, sacrifice. Because the reality is, there was no requirement. First of all, there was no requirement for redemption. All right, that was an arbitrary thing. If, if God is all powerful, then He can say, "I'll accept well, there, or not there accept." There was a anything. requirement by Jewish law. Well, what I'm so God is subject to Jewish law? No, God, God created the law, apparently, no, no, supposedly. No. The point is, if he's dictating yeah. this, then he's making the game. He's making these rules. So he's the one that says, hey, let's kill somebody. Let's torture them and let's kill them and let's slaughter a human being as recompense for all these guilty people so that they can then you know, be rewarded for their, for their the, lives the, and kill. The, and the reason for that is because we took in, in, got in the... In the um, the, the fruit. fruit of the tree. I, no, but there's no reason for it. No, there is no reason me. for it. Are you saying okay. that it is impossible? Is no Are you saying that it is impossible for God to just forgive without a blood sacrifice? God no, can't no, do that. No, he, he, he does. He, can he, can he no, do he, that? 
he he only he made instead of making each one of us fa sacrifice, he made one for all. My sacrifice. point is, he God, have, can you have answer? To be any. Can you answer any question straight, John? I try to make them really easy. Are you I saying am, yeah. can, can God, if he wants to, just say no blood sacrifice necessary? I forgive you for that. If he wants to, but he... Then why is, doesn't he want to? Listen, his character. It is his character of holiness. I, had, I told you wait, last wait. week. His character is an ass, and that's the point. Yeah, I, 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 agree, I, I agree that it's his character to, to demand a blood torture death. Yeah. Because that's what he did all through the Old Testament. And it so sounds it's not good a to him. It says the so. point is, it's not a character of holiness. That's a character of like mass, like sadistic cruelty. And if, if you have the right to make the rules of the game and you say, under my rules, we're going to slaughter animals for centuries and centuries and centuries, and then when it gets down to it, I'm just going to beat the hell out of a human being and then kill them in a horrific way, and that's my game. And you're saying this is the most moral God, you know, this is the most moral being. It's like there, there couldn't be a more immoral setup for a game. And the, the biggest joke of all is that he created it all. So the condemnation is heaped upon a thing that he produced. And he made all the parameters so that whatever happens, he already knew it was going to happen. He even set the foundations of the universe. He saw this whole thing out. He knew exactly what you were going to do from the time you were born to the time you were going to die set this whole thing up, and then condemns you for doing exactly what he knew you were going to do, and then slaughters somebody to make up for that. It's the most messed up thing ever. And to call that moral and good and to look at that and say, yeah, I can see the morality behind it. No, that's insanity. I, I don't even know what to call that. To, to, the fact that this religion could get people to call that love is a disgrace to human minds. I mean, I don't even yeah. know. It's what exactly, to say. you have demonstrated again this week exactly the point that I made last week. And that is, and that is that in bending over backwards to accept an immoral doctrine as moral, you have sacrificed your humanity, you have sacrificed your compassion, you have bought into absurdities and lies. You have, you basically said that whatever God says goes. And when, I, when asked the, the fairly simple questions, um, you have to hem and haw over it. Because somewhere, somewhere down deep, you know that it's not morally right. That slavery is not right. That, that mass right. infanticide is not right. That telling a raped woman she has to marry her rapist because that's his penalty for raping her, that is not right. That is not moral. And the fact that there are, there are so many people that are willing to call that moral shows me what this religion can do to a person's brain. It has twisted you up to the point where, and, and as Voltaire said, if you can get people to accept absurdities, you can get, get them to commit atrocities. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Uh, I, John, I think you're more moral uh, than your God, than your religion. Um, yeah, whatever morality you have under this doctrine is in spite of it, not because of it. Yeah, and what, what I had asked you last week, um, you know, about would you build a tortured cell? And today you call in to say that hell was designed for um, the devil and um, I take humans, back the smack. <laughs> yes, humans were never meant to go there. Uh, well, so then your view of God doesn't include an omniscience of the future. Um, but in any case, isn't he supposed to be all powerful? Why didn't he just eliminate all of those angels that opposed him? Why did he have to create a place to torture them forever? So he wasn't an omniscient God under John's model, is that what you're saying? Evidently, but it, it doesn't matter whether he saw it coming or not. Well, if he didn't, After really... it happened, he could have just, okay, you guys no longer exist. But he didn't. He's a sadistic, twisted, demented guy. He is the exact representation of the fears of that Bronze and Iron Age roving band of thugs who, who traveled around the Middle East trying to steal as much land as they could and doing it in the name of God. It's insane. And yet you're saying that he's the ultimate, you know, oh, it's the Dead Sea Scrolls. This is the ultimate source of morality. No, John, you are. And morality is something that has shifted culturally. It changes. It's something we grow and learn more about. And hopefully we are generally more moral than the, than the if we're doing things right, than the generation that preceded us. And the fact is, if you're, say, if, you, if you're willing to say, if God told me to rape a 12-year-old girl, I would not do it, then what, you've actually, what you're actually saying is that you do accept your own moral responsibility and that you're not deriving it from your God. Because what you're claiming is that you have a sense of morality that you would not violate, even if you believed that God was telling you to do this, that you would say, this is not correct and I would not do it. So you're, you're basically saying, if I consider it moral, I will accept it. 
uh, if God tells me to do it. But if I don't consider it moral, I won't accept it if God tells me to do it. And I think with hell, you're willing to say that you accept it because you're not really confronted with a reality. I think that if you had to really watch people be tortured or if you had to really watch someone be annihilated um, and say that that was correct, I think it would be a little bit harder. But because we're talking about a, a mythological thing that is not really there, that there's not something manifesting that you have to actually confront, like child rape, um, it becomes easier to say, yeah, I support this, because it's not, it's not an atrocity that you actually have to watch. And, and, and two quick things that I, I didn't get to get to, because it was difficult to get an actual answer, is uh, you know, sit down and think about it for a while and try and figure out exactly what the point was in God creating this system at all in the first place. Why not, if, you know, if, if supposedly he's omniscient or all-powerful, why not just create a bunch of good souls and let them live forever in, in heaven ahead of time? Why create this soul-filtering machine where we're going to send some of them to a paradise and some of them to a hell when he already knew? And, and, but the reality is there just, are no constraints. Like the idea that God is love and we can't stand in, in, you know, before that kind of love, it's like yeah. that's crap. If God is all-powerful, then we can stand before that kind of love because God can make it possible. So yeah. there, there's no constraints. You can't put constraints on it. Well, I guess you could, but you'd have to come up front with that and say, my God comes with all these constraints and you'd have to define those before you came forward with your argument for God. Yeah, and the last thing that we so. kind of almost marginally got to was you need some criteria for which you're going to determine, let's say, for example, that Jesus is good and Satan is evil or any kind of distinction. Um, yeah, because if I can't judge from the actions, how am I supposed to make the judgment? I mean, normally, you know, normally what I hear from Christians who are at least more familiar with the Bible uh, is the quote from Romans where it says that God is written on the heart of every man so that they are without excuse. And this is used by them to say that God has written into our heart so that we know the difference between good and evil and that is what we use as a barometer for determining good and evil. Uh, that's a problem for two reasons. For the exact same reason that your reliance on the scripture um, is, is a problem. And that is that if you're talking about an all-powerful being um, who can evidently make you do whatever he wants to do um, and a not quite all-powerful being, at least within Christian theology, and he hasn't squashed this one yet, but evidently they're in a struggle, um, and we're just little ants. And you think that this one has written a book to tell you that this is the good one, and other Christians think that this one has put a little plug in your heart to tell you that this one's the good one. Maybe this is the good one. Maybe this is the one that's lying and this one is waiting around to see if you'll ever figure it out, if you'll ever wake up and realize that what this one's telling you to do isn't good just because he says it's good. Maybe neither one of them exists, which is what the position that I'm in, in which case I'm still able to do what you could do with regard to either one of these, which is evaluate what they're saying and determine whether or not it is more beneficial than harmful, what are its effects on the individual, the society. What kind of society does it produce when we allow things like slavery and genocide and infanticide? Um, why would any loving being ever order anything like that? Would you? I mean, would you even set up a system like this? And then would you enact it? And could you sit there comfortable knowing that these little peons, these little playthings of yours, uh, just go over and wipe those guys out. They don't love me enough. Oh, and when you do it, make sure you run your swords through their bellies so that we kill the, the unborn that are in there because we don't want them to grow up to be heathens. Oh, and, and slaughter all the cattle and sheep. Yeah, I know you guys are starving in a roving band and you could really use them, but they're so bad that it's ruined their cattle and sheep too. So we better, we better, it's insane.